Hello, today we're going to review the topic finding a final amount in a word problem on exponential growth and decay. So first thing I want to do is let's go down here and let's look at the formulas that we're going to be using today and what our different variables represent. So we're dealing with exponential growth and so with, it, with that we have two different equations that we might use. We might have an equation where our value is increasing over time. If so, we're going to use the formula f equals p times 1 plus i to the power of t. And you go, well, miss, what are all the variables stand for? f is our final amount. That's what we're trying to get to. p is our principal or our starting value. i is our interest rate as a decimal. And t is our time in years. Okay. Now, notice the only difference between the two formulas is if it's increasing, we're going to add the interest rate as a decimal with one. If it's decreasing value, we're going to take one minus the interest rate as a decimal. All right, so let's go up here and read our problem and see which formula we're going to use today. It says an amount of 25,000 is borrowed for 14 years at 3% interest compounded annually. If the loan is paid in full at the end of that period, how much must be paid back? Use the calculator provided and round your answer to the nearest dollar. So let's identify our information here for a second. So 25,000 is the amount that we're borrowing. This is our P. Okay. Then it says that we are borrowing it for 14 years, so this is going to be our time. And then, let's pick a different color, we have a 3% interest rate here. And so we know that our interest rate I has to be converted to a decimal. So let's go ahead up here and let's do that. So 3% we know is the same thing as the fraction 3 out of 100, okay, because percent's always out of 100 which means that our decimal 3% is the same thing, or our percent, 3% th is the same as the decimal 0 0.03. So our I is going to be 0 0.03. Now, we are paying back a loan, so interest is going to accrue. Therefore, we're going to be using our first formula here, where we are increasing in value. So our formula is going to look something like this. So we have 25,000 as our principal, 1 plus our interest rate as a decimal raised to the power of t, which is 14. Now where people tend to mess up is actually putting this into their calculator. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do that together. Now this is just a regular calculator off the computer. I am in scientific mode. Okay, if you go to view, you can actually go to scientific. All right, so order of operations, I'm going to start inside my parentheses. So 1 plus 0 0.03. Then I'm going to do the exponent, which is raising it to the power of 14. So I'm going to hit x to the y, 14, hit equal. And then I'm going to multiply that value by the 25,000, that's my principal. And we get the answer. $37,814.74. Now, the question tells us that we need to round to the nearest dollar. Okay, So if I'm trying to round to the nearest dollar, I look to the number after the place value I need to round to. If it's 5 or larger, we round up. And in this case, it's a 7, so that means we are going to round up. Therefore, our final answer here is $37,815. So for our next problem here, we're going to actually use the formula for decreasing in value. So let's take a look. It says that a laptop is purchased for $800. Each year, the resale value decreases by 30%. What will the resale value be after five years? Now, guys, if this isn't a real-world example, I don't know what, what is. Because as you know, the minute you buy any sort of technology, as soon as you take that thing out of the store, right, the next day, a bigger, better phone or bigger, better computer will be coming out. And so they just decrease in value pretty quickly. So since we're losing value, we're going down in value, we're going to use the formula here for decreasing in value. Now we have $800 as our starting amount, so that's our P. 
We have 30% as our interest rate, so we're going to have to convert that to our I. And then we have after five years, which is our T. So we're going to come over here. We're going to say 30%, which is 30 over 100 as a fraction, which gives us the decimal 0.30. Now we are going down in value, therefore we're going to use the formula for decreasing in value. Alright, so we're going to plug in all of our values. Okay, and that gives us that our final amount will equal 800 times 1 minus our interest rate as a decimal, which is 0 0.30 raised to the power of 5. So again, I'm going to get my calculator up here. Alright, and let's give this one a try. Again, we're going to start inside the parentheses first, then exponents, then we're going to multiply. 1 minus 0 0.30 gives us 0 0.7. Raise that to the power of 5 and equal. Multiply that by our principal amount and we get $134.0.456. Now, Again, they, we check to see how they want us to round, which is very important, and they want us to round to the nearest dollar. So we're trying to round here. We look after it. This time it's a four. That's not five or greater. So therefore, we are going to just keep it as $134 as our final amount. Now the last problem type we're going to see on this topic deals with half-lives. So it says the half-life of a radioactive isotope is the same, is, sorry, is the time it takes for a quantity of the isotope to be reduced to half its initial mass. So we're going to start with the mass of 175 grams of a radioactive isotope. And they want to know how much will be left after three half-lives. So we come down here and here's our formula. Our final mass is equal to our initial mass times 0 0.50 raised to the power of t. So we know that our initial mass is 175 and we have three half-lives. So here's our formula. So again, I'm going to pull up my calculator and we're going to do this one together. So exponents before multiplication. So I'm going to put in my 0 0.50 and I'm going to raise it to the power of 3. I get 0 0.125. I'm then going to multiply that by my initial mass of 175. And I get 21.875. Alright, so now we have what we think is our initial answer, but we need to go back and check to see if we need to round. Now it says round to the nearest gram. Gram means whole number. So I look to at the one, I look after the one, to the place value after, and I have an eight. Since this is larger than five, that means we're going to round up to give us a final mass of 22 grams. Thank you guys for watching this short video. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to your instructor. Have a great day.